Greetings and welcome to another edition of AllHorseTalk.com. I'm your host, Alita Bunny Hendricks, and I have a new equine partner today, as you can see. This is Harry. Harry's a four-year-old off-the-track thoroughbred, fairly recent acquisition. He's here for some um, reschooling and some rehabbing, and he's just getting back into work right now. Today's topic is teaching your horse how to lunge. Before we begin, I'd like to ask that you have uh, already refreshed your memory on some of the prerequisite lunging skills by going back and reviewing three previous allhorsetalk.com videos. The first video that you need to preview is correct leading. It is under the grooming and presentation section of your premium membership of allhorsetalk.com. The second video to review is jogging your horse in hand. That is also in the grooming and presentation section of your premium allhorsetalk.com membership. The third video that you need to review is a little bit more lengthy. It discusses lunging equipment and its adjustment. That is under the stable skills section on your premium allhorsetalk.com membership. Today we'll talk about introducing a horse to lunging. Now Harry has had some lunging introduction. He's done walk halt work on the lunge and he's done a little bit of trot work but not very much. Today we'll be showing how to introduce a horse to the lunging process and as a special treat we have an assistant today. My friend Laurie Broom from Georgia is here with us and she will be helping with uh, the lunging today. The first thing that I want to remind you of that we discussed in the pre one of the previous videos on the lunging equipment is the space that you choose to lunge your horse. Be sure that it is a fenced in, fully enclosed area, such as a, a paddock or a riding ring, something that has a good fence to it. You want to have the, the land be flat, the surface be not on a hill, as flat as you can, and the footing be good and solid, good purchase footing semi-soft, not so deep that the horse will strain to go through it, and not hard either because that's very hard on the horse's legs. So, uh, make sure that the area is free of debris, no trash, no uh, farm equipment, and clear of all jumps, etc., etc. Also make sure that the area is free of uh, loose animals such as other horses or small dogs and children <laughs> so that you can lunge your horse in safety. The next thing I'd like to discuss is a couple of different ways to attach the lunge line. Um, you've noticed that I've led Harry in on a lead rope and not on the lunge line, and I'm carrying my lunge whip. I want to keep my lunge whip, I want to keep my lunge whip and my lunge line in my arms or hands at all times and not to let it fall on the ground. So I'm going to unattach the lead rope, which I have not directly attached to the bit. I've attached it as the first lunge line attachment that I'm going to show you. The first lunge line attachment is I'm going to put the line through the bit, make a loop around the inside of the bit, and attach it to the outside. Like so. This looping the bit the line around the inside ring of the bit prevents it from becoming a tight nutcracker action. I want this to be a gentle connection with the inside of the bit, and I want a stable connection with the outside of the bit. This is my preferred way. I'll show you another way, and there are several other ways that are appropriate. Another way, if a horse is particularly strong or if he tends to root and you need a little bit more of a gag effect, is to run the line through the inside ring of the bit of the snaffle bit, and always lunge in a snaffle if you're lunging from a bridle. I put it under the cheek peak, uh, excuse me, under the throat latch so that it helps stabilize the line. 
Then on the opposite side, run it under the throat latch again. <laughs> yes. Here, buddy. And then attach to the outside ring. This gives a little bit more control. If you have a horse that you're afraid might be a little strong, and it gives you a little bit more of a, of, an, of a gag effect, of an elevator effect, of raising the bit in the corners of the horse's mouth to help elevate the head. <clears throat> Notice as I'm adjusting my equipment, I keep my whip and my line organized and off the ground. and keep my line so that it makes continuous, continuous folds and not a coil or loop. One way that I would never suggest lunging a horse is with the lunge line attached directly to the inside ring of the snaffle bit. It is somewhat accepted in certain circles. However, I consider it for most lungers, myself included, to be extremely risky and um, not effective. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to review our leading and I'm going to then ask Harry to lead in a circle, gradually increasing the length of the lead that I'm giving him so that I'm further away from him. Then we will introduce a parallel lunging, and then we will introduce our assistant, Laurie, um, who will help us, and we will move to the corner for actually lunging on the circle. I prefer lunging in a corner because it helps give you a consistent size, shape, and location of your lunging circle. That's right, Harry. And it must be consistent in order for you to be lunging your horse effectively and properly. So, the <laughs> so we'll begin by reminding him about correct leading. I will keep my body placed between his head and between his shoulder so that I'm not pulling him along with me as I go. We'll make a circle, and as we make that first circle, I'll gradually let my line be a little bit longer to where I will then switch into a parallel lunging mode, and I'll talk about that when we get there. Okay, all right, let's go, Harry. Walk on, walk on. Good boy, walk on. Good boy. And note that I can use my whip as a little bit of a leg to keep him moving forward. Walk on, Harry, walk on. Okay, and as he walks on, walk on. We can do, walk on, good boy, good boy, good boy. A little bit of parallel lunging, which means that I'm gonna put myself in a correct lunging position. Walk on, walk on, walk on, walk on. I have my lunging hand, the connection into him. Good boy, walk on. I still have my whip lash rolled around the stock of my whip. Walk on, good boy, good boy. And I'm trying to keep my body about at his, between his shoulders and his girth. And he walks on quite nicely. And we parallel lunge, we walk parallel. We make a circle that's smaller than the circle that he makes. And that's the beginning. I at this point want to work on some transitions, some simple H-A-L-T, halt to walk transitions, and ho, Harry, and ho, and ho. Good boy. And what's important at this time is that the horse keeps his body completely perpendicular to, what you, to where you're facing. He stays on the circle. He doesn't turn his haunches out and face you. Harry, walk on, walk on, walk on, out, out. Out is another cue that he needs to learn. And I can sometimes I can point the front of the whip at his shoulder to ask him to walk out. I want ideally him to take a nice contact like he has here, where the lunge line doesn't have a loop or bend in it that I can have a little light walk on Harry, walk on good boy a light feel with his mouth, and then I can test his straightness by halting him where there is not the fence. The fence is a great help to begin. It gives you a, a concrete space to send your horse to, and it helps with the halt transitions, especially early on to keep them straight. Walk on, Harry, good boy. Walk on, out, 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 good boy, out, out. 
Good boy. Good boy. So I will test his halt by asking him to halt away from the fence. The fence is a place that I can keep him straight and walk on. No, nope, I didn't ask you. Walk on. Good boy, walk on, out. And ho, and ho. And I shift my balance a little closer to his face as he begins to halt and then back towards his girth as he does halt. I'd like that halt to have been a little squarer, so I'm gonna unroll my whip. Good boy, walk on. Out, 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 out. And I don't back up to, to make him take up the contact. I push him away from me. Good boy. Walk on, walk on. And ho. Good boy, good boy. All right, and we like that one. Now I'm here with my friend Laurie Broom, and she's going to be our lovely assistant for today to help with putting the horse out on a circle. Now initially when we put a, a horse out on the circle on the lunge for the first time, we want an assistant. The assistant will hold the line on the just near the bit, kind of like it was a lead rope, and walk walk the horse in the desired size circle. We'll make as large of a circle as we can, which we always want to do because we don't want to stress the horse's legs unduly. You'll notice that at this point, we do not have side reins. We don't use side reins on a really green horse. And I will show you in the next little segment of this video um, how, to, how to, one method of introducing side reins to a green horse. All right, and away we go. All right, okay. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to now walk to the center of the circle that where I will stand and we will send the horse out from the center of the circle. What this does is it kind of stakes your territory, so to speak, in horse language, and you're always sending the horse away from you. You're not backing away from the horse, but you're pushing him from you. All right, so we'll do that. Okay, just kind of stay with me. And I think the center is about here. Okay, now go ahead and uh, you want to hold a little bit. Yep, and then put. go ahead and put two hands on it. But keep your hand about six inches or so from the bit. There you go. Walk on. Walk on, Harry. And again, we want the same kind of forwardness at the walk that we would walk on, Harry, that we would ask of him at any rate. Got to un... Unturn my whip. There we go. Walk on, Harry. Walk on. Walk on. Walk on, Harry. Walk on. Walk on. Walk on, Harry. Walk on, walk on, walk on. Ideally, I'd like to keep myself in a pie shape. I'd like a, a smooth contact from my hand to the horse's mouth, even with Lori helping me out here. Walk on. I want to keep my shoulder squarely facing his shoulders. Walk on, Harry. Walk on. And I want to keep my whip pointed towards his hip so that the whip acts as my leg encourages him to move forward, to move on. If I have my whip, be my leg behind me, my whip or my leg behind me, that's not on the horse. If I am dragging it this way, it's not on the horse. And I never, never, never want to drop my whip onto the ground to set it on the ground because that puts me in a vulnerable spot. Okay, at this point, Harry's walking along nicely. So Lori's going to move cl closer to me slightly a little bit walk on harry walk on walk on so keep moving a little bit towards me laurie as he is out on the line walk on as i focus on keeping my position near his shoulder facing his shoulder as he moves out on the circle laurie can slowly kind of move in towards me out and my job is to try to keep harry moving outward okay come behind me there you go awesome walk on walk on Walk on, and at this point, Harry's pretty well. Walk out, out, out. Good boy, and ho, and ho, and ho. Harry, ho, ho. 
Good boy. Good boy. All right. So, Lori, you can go ahead and walk out of the circle. So, at this point, we've asked the horse to walk and halt on the circle. Thank you, Lori. That was great help. What I'll do now is we will go out on the circle and we will walk and we will do some trot work so that you can see what early trot work looks like. My first few lessons with the horse are going to be solely on walking and halting, walking and halting, and they're going to be short lessons, uh, no longer than 15 minutes total. Okay, good boy. All right. Walk out, good boy, out. So we again go to the center of the circle where we want our resting place to be. We push the horse out from us. Walk on, Harry, good boy. Walk on, Harry, good boy. Out, Harry, good boy. Good boy. Push him out until we've got the size circle that we want to end up with. Walk on, Harry. Walk on, Harry. Good boy. Okay. Walk on. Out. 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 Good boy. Out. Okay, Harry. Walk on. Good boy. And Harry, to rut, to rut. To rut, Harry. To rut. Good boy. To rut. Good boy. Trot. 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 Trot on. Out. 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 You can see the size and the shape of the circle is irregular. I've got to do a better, better job of keeping him on trotting. Trot. Trot. Good boy. Out. Out. Easy. I'm going to try not to let him walk me too far this direction. Trot on, trot on, out, trot, out, 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 out. And like most horses, trot on, trot on. He wants to fall in at the same place, so I tried to be a little proactive and move out towards him at that spot. Good boy, which he did do. Good boy. So when the horse trot, 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 out, 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 good boy. Total green horse. Trot on, Harry, four-year-old. Good boy. Out, up, good boy. Out, good boy. Out, trot on. Good boy. Trot, 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 trot. My goal is just to get a little bit more forwardness out of the trot. Good boy, and a little relaxation. Good boy, and a little balance. There's a little balance, there's a little, little bit of relaxation. Trot on. Good boy, trot on. Move. Good boy, and walk, and walk. Good boy. Okay, notice the commands. When I'm asking for an upward gait, I have more energy in my tone, and my voice inflection raises in pitch. It starts lower and then it raises up. So I'll do an example of that. And I usually say his name first as a half halt so that he listens. And Harry, to rut, to rut, to rut. And trot is a two syllable word. To rut, good boy, trot on. Good boy, good boy, good boy. And already he's a little more, a little more forward, a little more regular, still very green. And I would continue with the walk trot work, walk trot halt work, you know, for several sessions, many sessions. And walk. Note that we've used the corner of the arena because that gives me two sides to keep him in a more regular spot. And ho, ho, ho. And my downward transitions have a downward inflection. Good boy, good boy. At this time, Harry still needs a lot of work on me being more solid at the trot with his rhythm and balance before he's really ready to go on side reins. I'm going to show you, however, 
a way of introducing a horse to side reins and they should be introduced to side reins after they can at least walk and trot in balance and obedience on the lunge line. We'll start with only one side rein. We're going to use the outside side rein because we want the horse to learn to go into the outside aids. So we emphasize the outside side rein. It also helps us to provide a guardrail, so to speak, if you will, which will help keep the horse connected from behind, outside hind, into the outside ring of the bit. It'll help stabilize the body, it'll help to balance the body, and it will help to keep the horse's shoulders in line and his haunches in line um, so that he doesn't pop a shoulder out or doesn't swing a haunch in or out. So that's the purpose of the single outside side rein. Since Harry is very green, I'm going to attach it low on the sur single. Low is for green horses, and as the horse increases in his level of schooling and changes his frame to a more uphill balance, we can then employ higher rings on the surcingle to accommodate his balance point being from greater engagement and lightening of the shoulder. But Harry being very green, we want to keep him very straight, level, and, and balanced on a very level and even plane. Hence, we use the bottom ring of the surcingle. I'd like this outside side ring to be extremely loose at this point. I really want little to no connection with the bit while the side ring is on. I want him to, to not feel that he has any kind of encumbrance or any kind of restriction on the outside. I just want him to know that it's there, that's it. I've ex added an extension, I added a large snap to the end of this to create a little bit more length so that if he does bump into the outside of the bit, that it doesn't frighten him, that it doesn't back him off, that it doesn't create an, uh, it doesn't create an accident, so to speak, if you will. All right, so we are now going to travel the other direction just as a demonstration of how to introduce the side rein to a horse. Okay, bud. Okay, Harry, walk on, walk on. And we'll start it at the walk, just so that he knows it's there, so that he can feel it. And as I get my equipment in position and organized and I get myself comfortable, let him just feel that it's there. Good boy, out, out. And I try to be a little bit proactive with him out, good boy, good boy, out, out, good boy, out. And as he just goes along here at the walk, walk on, walk on, walk on, he actually starts to stretch a little bit into the outside contact, which is highly desirable. He's got a little bit of a nice little swing to his walk. He's over tracking a little bit. Walk on, walk on, out, good boy, out, good boy, out. And before we trot, we'd like to make the circle a little bit larger so that he's got as large a circle as possible. Walk on, good boy, good boy, nice walk there. Nice walk, a little loosening in the back, a little bit of swinging in the hips, good boy. Thank you, good boy. Out, out, walk on, out. Walk on, walk on. Come on, good boy. Okay, out, 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 good boy. Okay, so now he's relaxed. We've got a regular walk. We've got it pretty rhythmic. We've got him moving forward. We've got him out on a fairly good circle. He's chewing the bit softly. He's stretching into the, out, into the outside. He's stretching into the side ring, which is very nice for where he is in his level of development and schooling. Good boy, walk on, good boy. So we want to ask, we've got a slight grade in this corner. It is about the flattest corner that I have in the arena, but there is a slight grade. So I always want to ask for transitions on the uphill side with a green horse. Harry, we're going to trot and Harry to rut, to rut, to rut, good boy. <laughs> to rut, trot on, good boy, good boy. Good boy, trot on, good. 
and actually the loose outside side rein. Trot on, Harry. Trot on. Good boy. Good boy. Trot on. Move forward. Move forward. Go forward. Outside side rein. He's not bothering him at all. And it's a little bit trot on. A little bit stabilizing, if you will. Good boy. Lovely there. Little whoops. A little bit of spring. Good boy. A little soft chewing. Good boy. Out on the circle. Good boy. Trot on. Trot. 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 Wait. Trot. Till we get to an uphill spot. Trot. Good boy. Good boy. And walk. Good boy. And ho. And ho. Good boy. Good boy. And the outside side ring helps keep him a little bit stabilized. And then we immediately take the side rein off. And we can clip it up to the surcingle. In a very short sequence, that has encapsulated probably four to six weeks worth of work in introducing a young horse how to lunge. I'm glad you got to meet our new allhorsetalk.com family member, Harry, and I think he was a trooper today. And thank you so much to my good friend Laurie Broom for helping me with Harry. She's been a great help to me here on the farm. And I will, until next time, this is your host, <laughs> Alita Bunny Hendricks, reminding you to be good to your horse and be good to yourself. Until next time, goodbye.